Hello, this is Dean Karstens, and this is Dean's N-Scale Trains. In my last video on this series on the Conejos Valley Railroad, I talked about putting in ground throw switch controllers for all the switches that I could reach by hand. Today I'm going to talk about something related, namely the Atlas HO N-Scale under table switch machine. The Atlas under table machine is very, very nicely constructed. The Atlas under table switch machine is a very nice thing to use when you have to put your, when you want to hide your switch machine under the table but you want to do it remotely you want to control it remotely it has the same solenoid system as all the other atlas switch machines it's easy to use easy to install easy to wire up and um, it looks like it's pretty pretty usable here are the two switches that i want to operate remotely I'm going to show two examples. In the first one, it's a normal under table installation. In the second, I'm going to use a linkage to mount it above the table. Okay, I've got the three leads going to the machine to the control switch. Note that the blue is in the center for both. I've got the power leads hooked up to my, my power supply, my 12 volt DC power supply, and we're ready to test this. Looks great. Usually what I do to make a neat wire assembly is to take the three the three or four, whatever I've got, wires. Usually one end is sitting in the uh, layout somewhere. Take a drill. Chuck it in a drill and twist it up. Give a nice, neat wire assembly. So here's the switch machine. It's normally mounted underneath a baseboard, and they suggest using a baseboard less than half an inch. As you can see here, I cut a slot in the foam, and the masonite hardboard sits above that. And what I need to do is feed that into, let me raise this up. I need to feed this through. And as you can see, I cut a hole here in a slot actually, right below the draw bar on the switch machine, on the switch. Um, and I wanna get this little pin sticking into that draw bar hole. Now, how I, how I adjusted this was pretty easy. I put this, the switch machine in the intermediate position. I fastened this with a uh, C-clamp and drilled these two to holes into the, that, that uh, three-quarter, three-eighths inch board that's holding the uh, switch machine. Now I've done this before. I've already drilled them. I've already drilled these, so it should be in the right position. All I have to do is replace the screws. And you notice, you notice I countersunk, countersunk the holes so they're flat. Let me raise this up and adjust it. 
I think you can see the pin coming up there, sitting in the drawbar hole. Now let me run over here and see if it works. Yep, that looks pretty solid. Now, if I ever need to replace this or fix a wire or something, you see there's this big slot down here that I can get into. And if I have to, I can remove these two screws and pull the thing out, the machine out, and replace it if necessary. The second one's a little bit more difficult because what I'm going to have to do, I want to mount it here. And create a wire connection between the, the machine and the switch. Now you see I've drawn a line here that shows that that's perpendicular to the rail in line with the drawbar to show where I want to put this. And I had to cut this pin off just a little bit to get it to fit. This, by the way, is a spacer that uh, goes under there. From the top, I think you can see there are two of those 3 8 inch boards, rectangular boards, and I just glued those together into the baseboard to support it. So here we are at my bench. Here's the machine. Now, and this is the linkage that I created. I hope you can see that. There's a little, I, I made a little circle there with the wire and I used a pair of needle nose pliers to do that. Uh, and I bent this into a U-shape. Now, obviously, I did this knowing what the dimension was going to be. I'd measured the distance. This is just a 0.1 inch styrene cylinder that uh, I cut. It's about a half inch less than the, uh, the draw on this. Actually, it's more like three quarters of an inch. Now, to fasten this, this is a 172 nut. And it just so happens you can screw that on fairly tightly. And it's held there. And I think I was thinking of putting some, uh, just a little drop of uh, a drop of uh, super glue to hold that. Okay, now let's go back to the railroad layout. Okay, we're ready to install this. You see, I put the the three wires, attach the three wires to the back. The important thing is to remember which one goes here because that's the common and that's green. I always usually make that green. The other color, our colors don't really matter so much. Okay, we're gonna hook this. Okie doke. Now, once again, as I said, to find where this goes, I lined it up, put everything in the center, and drilled the holes. I'll put the spacer back. One, two, 
This should be held tightly against each rail. And you should be able to, it should, it's spring loaded, so it should work just fine. Now, what I'm going to do is glue this down about there. I'll probably put a station platform here. Then this will be covered up with the scenery, which will come down and cover that up. Now you might ask, how am I gonna service this? Well, hopefully I never will have to, but if I will, the scenery coming over is gonna be plaster cloth. I'll just have to cut around the plaster cloth and remove it to get to this. But like I say, with luck, I'll never have to service this. Okay, I brought the wires out. This, by the way, is a, uh, a wire stripper that you can buy if you want to. Uh, just put them in the correct hole. This is a number 20 wire, 20 gauge wire. And strip them about quarter of an inch. That one's a little too long. Now, as you remember, I said the green always goes to the, is the common. The common is the center wire here, the center uh, screw here. Okay, that's the final one. And I'm gonna pull these through. Okie doke. Now, to power these, to power these, I've got a uh, 12 volt, half an amp wall, wire, wall wart power supply transformer plugged in the AC there and we'll see what happens okay that's it for this video I've shown you two cases for using the under table machine one under the under the baseboard in the normal fashion the other above the baseboard with a linkage in that case I have to hide the machine but I can do that later so if you've liked this video, please subscribe if you want to see more on this series, and please give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.